The most interesting of all, at least for me, and I think for others as well, are the thousands of messages that have over the years been written on that wall, that roughly 180 meter long wall in front of Graceland. And uh, these uh, can be very uh, revealing of sentiment and belief. You see Elvis's face, and you see it over and over again. There's no indication of where he is, what time of day it is. It's even hard to tell how old he is sometimes because they've done so much to his face just in the photograph. Well, all these qualities are paralleled in icons from the Orthodox world nowadays and going back all the way to the 6th and 7th century after Christ. Icons, pilgrimages, holy places, and festivals are common to almost all religious traditions. On show at the same Oxford exhibition were traditional Catholic and Elvis images twinned to show their parallels. And comparisons don't stop there. Of late, there have been Elvis revelations and apocalyptic visions. I found myself in paradise. And very suddenly, I saw this blinding, or all but blinding, white light. And then a voice that sounded very similar to a thunderstorm, the roll of thunder. And yet it was very recognizable. The words were just clear as day. And I was told by the voice coming out of the light, quote unquote, go back and tell them Elvis. He's Emmanuel, the only begotten son God promised he would send not only would he send him to the tribes of Israel, but he would send him to the Gentiles also. Emmanuel and Elvis were synonymous. The Son of God. No question about it. The very, if you will, incarnation of. I'm convinced he was also led to the slaughter like the lamb. Robert interprets the original gospel story as myth, foretelling the coming of Elvis. I'm convinced that that is not only a legend and a myth, but it's based on a, a prophecy that was going to come true, and only a prophecy that was going to come true. So has the risen Elvis been seen? Yes, he has been seen. He will come and judge the world with his, what is known as the feather of truth. And that will be Judgment Day. And is that soon? Uh, relatively speaking, that's very soon. Uh, there's no question about it. It's got to be within 10 years and most likely closer to five years, maybe even less. The enigma of Elvis continues. Artists like Isabel Tanner believe they are guided by him to bring his message to the world. Even his close friends look back and now see an extraordinary pattern to Elvis's life. Elvis's birth, his life and his death has so many biblical themes to it and it does his life is a mystery in a lot of ways he, Elvis was an enigmatic uh, figure Larry today recalls a poignant moment sitting with Elvis and his father Vernon in the meditation garden at Graceland Vernon turned to me he said Larry I remember exactly when Elvis was conceived because at that moment, when I was with his mother, all of a sudden, my mind went blank. And all of a sudden, it's like it went into this big black vastness. And then I came back into my body, and I knew something happened. I just knew something monumental happened. And so when, when my wife told me that she was pregnant, I wasn't surprised at all. And there was a great famine in Dixie at that time. The famine was also called a depression because the people did not have enough to eat and they became listless and low. And Vern was depressed most of all because Gladys' love was big with child, though he barely knew her. Now Vern was going to run away up north, but he heard a voice one night in a dream. And the voice said, Behold, Vernon, fruit of Jess, Jesse, stay with Gladys' love and remain her husband. For in her womb is conceived the Holy Spirit of the rock that will break upon the world. And you shall call the child Elvis, which means all wise, because he is coming into the world to be proclaimed the king. Elvis, his soul, is a master type soul. It's a teacher type soul that comes from um, other realms. 
such as the star system of Orion, and it came to Earth with uh, a great light. Uh, and it was working through uh, a physical human personality vehicle that was not in its perfected state. When he was a young child, he would go out in the fields alone and by the streams, and these beings would talk to him. And sometimes they would appear to him as shining ones. And um, they would tell him that he was blessed, that he was sent to the earth for a special purpose. They also showed him in his head, they showed him a man in a white suit standing on a stage with lights all around him. Of course, the little boy in Tupelo had no idea what he was seeing. And it wasn't until he was an adult and wore his beautiful white jumpsuits that he realized he was seeing himself that they had shown him his future. Elvis was something special. He really was. We talked about it many times. Uh, the guys in his group, you know, in fact, I was a leader of the conversation on several occasions. I said, you know, guys, I said, we're around Elvis a lot and we see him all the time. I grew up with him. But there really is something special about this guy. He's, uh, I don't want to be, uh, 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 I don't want to be sacrilegious, but he's Jesus-like. I mean, he has these powers. He can, he can almost hypnotize you. Uh, and he can sway you with his conversation and his looks and uh, his great personality and his fa fantastic talent. I said, you know, he's got to be something special, and they all agreed to that. He was something special. He wasn't just a normal human being because you couldn't have what he had and just be normal. One close friend of Elvis, it's said, was walking with him when she witnessed a remarkable event similar, perhaps, to the transfiguration of Christ. They were watching the stars, and he was pointing out to her the constellation that he was from, that his soul had come from, Orion. And he said, my star is Rigel, and there it is, and he pointed it out to her. And as he was talking about his home and the blue star, um, and how he really longed to return there, uh, she said that he started to glow, and she said there were no lights around, that he actually just glowed from within. It almost spooked her, except there was such a calming feeling about it, she couldn't be frightened. So hush, little baby, don't you cry. You know your daddy's bound to die. But for all that, Elvis died an ignominious death. It hardly seemed at the time like the beginning of a new chapter in the Elvis story. I was over at the gate, over at Graceland, and when the ambulance went up, I had thought that something had happened to Lisa, and I didn't know until the ambulance actually came out and was leaving. And I looked in the back, and I saw Elvis, and I knew I'd never see him again. I knew he was gone. I switched on the news. And it was on the news, and I just sat and cried all day. Just watched the television, watched the news over and over. Couldn't believe it that he died. I cried, and I took my children to school, came back and cried again. Couldn't go to work. Just too emotional, it was too upsetting. It was horrible. We said we would kill ourselves. But I was 10, and my sister was 11. But, uh, yeah, we did say that uh, if ever we died, we would kill ourselves. But did it seriously cross your mind? Oh, yes. Very seriously. I saw a slab with a body lying on it, and I froze. It was obvious that it was Elvis. You know, there's been so many stories about Elvis being alive. I only wish that were true. And yet, there was something in that room, something, a presence. And that was Elvis's soul, Elvis's spirit, or whatever you want to call it. And Elvis, being an icon of the 20th century, lives on in his films and his recordings. He can be resurrected by any fan at the touch of a button. I think all of his songs, if you listen to all his songs, he's actually getting messages over. You know, so, um, it's just unbelievable. If he could actually resurrect again, you could say like Jesus did, really, you know, he's there. But Elvis 
doesn't die for an Elvis fan. He, he'll never die. He'll always be alive, but we've all got memories. And, and while you've got songs to listen to and photographs to look at, he'll never, ever die. Never. The vast majority of humankind experience the divine in something earthly and in a human being, in a man or a woman. Uh, it's very common for people to experience the divine in what can only be an inadequate human being. The, the essential and amazing thing about the um, spiritual quest is that, um, it, it's a, that the divine is able to be apprehended at all. So of course we think that Elvis is a, we might think that Elvis is a grossly inadequate symbol of the divine, but one could have said the same as of Jesus. After all, Jesus died the death, the very common death of a disgraced criminal. But Christians believe that Jesus knew he was the son of God. So who or what did Elvis think he was? What did he believe? Elvis had what is considered an awakening a rebirth, and it happened in the Arizona desert in 1965. And all of a sudden, Elvis had a vision in the clouds. And when I looked at him, he went, oh, like that, and he gasped for breath. His jaw dropped, his eyes just lit up. He ran into the desert, and I followed him. And he had tears just rolling down his cheeks. And he said, finally, I don't have to believe, I don't believe in God anymore, I don't have to. I know, I know God is the truth and God lives in my heart and in everyone's heart because that cloud turned into the face of God himself and he smiled at me and it exploded in my heart. Now I know forever and ever that God loves me and he loves all of us. Elvis's manager and his father never encouraged his religious quest and he shared his deepest thoughts only with Larry and a few select friends, sometimes in long, intimate telephone conversations. My spiritual self, my inner being, is hungry for personal contact with other people's spiritual selves and inner beings. This tape has never, ever been broadcast before and voice print analysis strongly suggests that it is the voice of Elvis himself. Now, I know some of the things that I think are kind of uh, far out. Uh, some people are on the steps two and three, and I am possibly on, I'm on five and six of the spiritual ladder, and I, what I think and believe scares those that are on three and four or two and three and terrifies those that are on step one and what i think is above and beyond what the majority of my fans think and they're not ready for this they're not ready to hear me say these things but i have this need for more and it's driving me crazy. It's, it's driving me crazy. The real Elvis drove his audiences crazy. The famous gyrating pelvis was a direct challenge to the taboos of his age. Now, some impersonators go still further. Elvis herself is as a declared lesbian. But perhaps this is what Presbyterianism is all about, getting rid of guilt. Unlike some religions, that seem to thrive on it.